Welcome back to another Synesthesia tutorial. Today we're going to import a shader toy and add our own custom control and audio reactivity. Shader Toy is an incredible repository of shader art with over 75,000 shaders and more added every day. Synesthesia allows you to import these shaders and bring them to life. Before we get started, it's important to note that each shader toy has its own licensing, so make sure that any shaders you use commercially have an appropriate license and attributions. Once you've found an appropriate shader toy, you'll just need to copy this URL and then head over to Synesthesia. We'll start in the Settings tab to make sure we have a few appropriate settings. We'll want built-in scene editor enabled here. We'll need to make sure we have at least one custom scene folder added, and then we'll pick one to set as our primary. I like to use one just for shader toys imports. Then we can head over to this Import tab on the right side, paste your URL, and hit Load Scene. With any luck, it should just pop up here in the upper right corner. If you don't see it, or if you see any red errors in the console output down here, make sure to check out our other video, How to Manually Convert from Shader Toy to SSF. If it does import successfully, we just need to hit Create Sin Scene in Library, then hop over to our library and find the scene. I'll sort to my Shader Toys folder, and here it is right here. So we'll click the three dots, then the pencil, and this will load us into the edit mode. Now that we have the scene imported and loaded into our IDE, let's start with a simple change that will work for almost every scene. And that's the time variable, a variable that's built into Shader Toy and Synesthesia that progresses continually over time. Synesthesia, though, offers other variables that progress only when the volume is happening. For instance, sin underscore time with a capital T. We can replace time with this variable and then hit reload at the top left here, and you'll see that it's already reacting to the music. We can also add bass time or other frequency specific times that will give you a different feeling and a different reaction to the music. You can even combine them together to get a compound effect. Feel free to play around with this until you land on something that you like. When you're happy with this effect, we can try adding a slider. We'll simply hop over to the edit bar in the right side panel here, scroll down to controls and hit the plus button and expand the newly added control. We can give it a name. I like to make one that's just called Fiddle that I use to play around with values. The default values here will be fine. They'll create a slider that goes from 0 to 1 and starts at 0. Hit save in the top right corner here, and then scroll down in the IDE to see your control. Now that we've added a slider, let's put it to use in our scene. One quick tip is that most shader artists will arrange their scene in roughly the same order, and that's going to be some defines at the top that you may or may not be able to change. These ones look like they're pretty hard set, like you wouldn't want to change the value of pi. And then you're going to have a bunch of usually general purpose utility functions, rotation, change colors. These things you usually don't want to mess with too much either. I usually skip past all this and look for something more scene specific, like this smooth kaleidoscope or cell function. Usually you can play around with some values in here and get some kind of interesting effect. Scrolling down, I see this cell function has a lot of what I would call magic numbers in here. That's 1,237, 4.0, 13.0, just weird numbers that seem like you could change them and something might happen. So usually what I like to do is just start by throwing some zeros in there and then reloading. That changed something, but not much. Let's try maybe this one. Okay, that did something interesting. Let's try adding our, multiplying our fiddle slider in here so that we can play with it live. Then we'll reload the scene, scroll down to our slider, That doesn't do very much. Maybe we give it a bigger range. We could do times the slider times 10. Reload again. Now we're on to something. Let's give this slider its name. We'll call it Rainbow Eyes. Give a brief little description. Save our change. We've got an arrow in the console output now, because we've changed the name of the slider, but we're still calling it fiddle in our code. So let's go over here. 
fix that name. Reload, and then we're good. Synesthesia also offers a wide array of audio variables that you can use in your scene. You can explore these by loading the uniforms meter scene from the marketplace. This is available for free download, or you can just play it straight from the marketplace and it'll load up. This just offers an easy way to see the available uniforms and how they respond to the audio you're listening to. Let's implement some of these audio variables in our code. First we'll hit reload editing scene in the sidebar to get back to our scene that we're working on, and then we'll find a new magic number. I see this one right here, 0 0.1, that looks like we could play with it. Let's try changing it to 0 0.2. Yep, sure enough, that's doing something. Now let's try just placing it entirely with something like sin level, which tracks the overall volume of the track. Make sure to reload. There we go, we've got some audio reactivity. Now just repeat the process until you're happy with the result. And there we go, it's a whole new scene. We've made it our own thing, added a couple controls, added some audio reactivity. Now we just get to sit back and have some fun while listening to some music.